हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑन बायजूस एग्जाम प्रेप इंडिया मोस्ट कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव प्रिपरेशन प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर ऑल द इंजीनियर्स इन टूडेज कॉन्सेप्ट कैप्सूल वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट हाउ ए थ्री फेज इंडक्शन मोटर स्टार्ट इन जस्ट टेन टू फिफ्टीन मिनट्स द फर्स्ट थिंग आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज द बेसिक कंस्ट्रक्शनल डिटेल्स ऑफ एन इंडक्शन मोटर एंड देन आई विल क्विकली जम्प टू द कॉन्सेप्ट पार्ट दैट हाउ एक्चुअली मोटर स्टार्ट सो लेट एस स्टार्ट विद द सेशन Some of you may be joining me for the first time, so there is a brief introduction about myself. My name is Ashutosh, as you can see on the screen, and this is my brief profile. The next one is the basic idea about a three-phase induction motor. Like any other machine, induction motor is also going to have a stator that is the stationary part and a rotor that is the rotating part. The stator is going to have a three-phase distributed winding. These three-phase distributed windings are very important. Otherwise, the rotating magnetic field is not going to be developed. On the rotor side, we have basically two types of constructions. The one is a squirrel cage rotor. I will show you the diagram also. It looks like the old squirrel cage. That is why its name is squirrel cage. And we have the slip ring or the wound rotor also in which windings are placed. In case of a squirrel cage, copper or aluminium bars are used which are short circuited at both the ends with the end rings. So let me just show you the overall picture of a three phase induction motor. You can see this is the stationary part and this stationary part is going to be the frame of the motor and it is going to house the stator winding. These are the stator windings and these are three phase distributed windings. Then on the rotating part on the shaft, we have either the squirrel cage or the slip ring or the wound rotor type rotor. Then we have several mechanical parts. You can see bearings and so many other mechanical parts which are required to assure the proper functioning of the motor. From the circuit point of view, let us try to understand first the stator and the slip ring or wound rotor induction motor. You can say that the stator is going to be three phase distributed windings which is represented by this delta winding. It can be star also. It depends on the choice. Then we have the rotor windings. You see the rotor windings are also three phase. They are also distributed and they are connected to the mechanical shaft with the help of the brushes and the slip ring. So brushes and slip rings are required when you are having the slip ring or wound rotor induction motor. Now these slip rings and brushes are going to give you the terminals which, which gives you a link or you can say start and run positions or resistances which can be inserted into the rotor circuit while the motor is started. You can see at the start point what is happening. At the start point these sliders are going to be at this position. So what is happening? When this position, start position is there, then these external resistance will come into the rotor circuit. Are you getting this? Now, whereas if you see at the run position, these sliders are going to be at this position so that all the three windings are short circuited. So we say that the induction motor rotor windings are always short circuited. You can observe this. In the squirrel cage rotor also, in the squirrel cage rotor also by using the end rings, these rotor copper or aluminium bars, they are always short circuited. Now let us try to understand that what is that phenomena, what is that sequence of events because of which actually our three phase induction motor starts. Please try to understand there are two types of rotating magnetic field in our induction motor. You take the stator frame of reference because if you want to define the speed or the direction then you must have a reference. And the best way is to have the stator as the frame of reference because the stator is stationary. From the stator point of view if you see the rotating magnetic field of the stator it is going to have a speed ns that is what we are defining as synchronous speed that is 120 f upon p where F is the supply frequency and P is going to be the number of poles, number of poles. Again for the 
rotating magnetic field of the rotor this is also rotating at the same synchronous speed with respect to the stator please mind my words very important concept both the rotating magnetic field of the stator and the rotor they are rotating with the synchronous speed with respect to the stator when it comes to the rotor the rotor is rotating at nr speed which is just behind the synchronous speed the induction motor never achieves the synchronous speed but it is very close to the synchronous speed so you can say it is going to be less than the synchronous speed and you have the relation also nr is equal to ns 1 minus s where s is what s is the slip slip of the induction motor now let us try to understand the basic phenomena the first thing you are going to do is you are going to provide a three phase balanced supply this is very important because the concept is when a three phase balanced supply is given to a three phase distributed winding then the rotating magnetic fields develops so when you give a three phase balanced supply to a three phase distributed stator winding what happens a rotating magnetic field of the stator is going to develop now this rotating magnetic field of the stator is going to link with the rotor windings yes or no now the rotor windings because it is a time varying flux they are going to develop some emf so we are saying emf is induced in the rotor windings or the bars now because the rotor windings rotor windings or you can say rotor bars they are always short circuited they are always short circuited so what will happen the current will start flowing in the rotor winding because of these induced emf so currents are going to induce in the rotor windings now once the currents are induced in the rotor windings again the rotating magnetic field of the rotor is going to be developed that is what we are saying there are two rotating magnetic fields in case of induction motor now these two rotating magnetic fields are going to interact with each other and this interaction will give rise to the interaction torque which you call as developed torque which you call as developed torque i hope it is clear and when the interaction torque or the developed torque or the electromagnetic torque develops in the motor the motor actually starts the motor actually starts i will show you with the this phenomena with the help of a diagram also and you can read this question and you can comment the answer of this question in the comment section of video let me show you suppose this is the stator this is the stator of your induction motor and suppose this is the rotor this is the rotor rotating part this is the stator stator is going to have a three phase distributed winding suppose this is a phase suppose this is a phase this is b phase and this is c phase so we are providing three phase balanced supply to the stator stator winding we are providing the three phase balanced supply what will happen what will happen the moment you supply a three phase balanced supply to the three phase distributed winding of the stator a rotating magnetic field of the stator is going to develop a rotating magnetic field of the stator is going to develop now this rotating magnetic field because of the currents in the stator winding is going to link with the rotor winding or the bars and what will happen the rotor windings or the bars will develop rotor currents these rotor currents are going to have its own rotating magnetic field and that magnetic field we have already seen rotates in the same direction with the synchronous speed this is going to be the rotating magnetic field of the rotor and this is also rotating at the synchronous speed but mind my words with respect to the stator frame of reference is it clear now because of these two magnetic fields rotating magnetic fields interacting with each other 
your rotor starts rotating in the same direction but with a speed which is just behind the synchronous speed. So if you ask me, the first position is going to be the rotating magnetic field of the stator. Behind this, there will be rotating magnetic field of the rotor. And because of the interaction of these two magnetic fluxes or the magnetic fields, the motor starts. I hope it is clear. You see a question, you see a question and this question is asking, what is the speed of the rotating magnetic field of the rotor with respect to the rotor? There is a twist, there is a concept. He is not asking the speed of the rotating magnetic field of the rotor with respect to stator. He is asking with respect to rotor. So you have to answer this question in the comment section of this concept capsule. And if you are not able to do it, I will give you the correct answer. So thank you so much for watching this concept capsule. Do not forget to subscribe to Baiju's exam prep to stay updated with all such more information. Thank you so much. Take care.